Imagine for your next design project, you could just type in what you needed and it would automatically generate a design for you. That's why today we're going to test out a brand new tool called 3D Guru. I have a really fascinating approach and I'm curious how this actually functions and if this is something that people could incorporate into their design workflows. And I'm also curious what you think about incorporating language as a way to design and iterate. Even if you are not to incorporate this into your particular design process, this could enable and make designing more accessible to more people. Because at this point, you may not need four or five years of experience, four or five years of education. You can just type in this information and then start to iterate on those designs. One of my favorite features within this tool is its image generation and rendering capabilities. So really easily you can add your own images or just have a really simple scene and then you can add prompts and then it automatically generates renders or images for you. All right, so this is the main interface here and how this works is you can toggle through different categories and depending on that category, you prompt different items. So if you were working with native geometry, I could type in cube here, or I could type in sphere, and it would generate uh, native uh, shapes. What I do like here is you can, it has uh, little tooltips here, so I can hit rotate with R or scale. Uh, so it's definitely really easy to manipulate the geometry. And then you can deselect item with a D, and then if you're on a Mac, if I select an item, that means I can hit Q to delete. I can drag, I can click the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if I want to rotate, I can hit shift, right click. So the navigation is pretty easy and I like that you can really easily move around and change how you manipulate those objects with pretty easy commands. So now we have a room. Let's see the different types of things we can do. So if we're on the texture tab, I can type in wooden texture. I'll just say wooden. Now it generates a wooden texture. So I can select, uh, select something. I will say you don't necessarily know that you are selecting an item. One thing that is kind of interesting is that each time that you type in a material, like wood for instance, it comes up with very different results. And I do find that kind of interesting, um, which is you definitely want to still be able to have the controls over that material. And sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get. So having the scale factor is definitely really important. Also being able to then take some geometry and continue to edit that material would definitely still be a helpful item. So then there's also some preset objects. So we can put in a furniture and I wonder if I can scale this furniture or not. So let's do scale and wow, I can actually scale this. There is no undo button also. So make sure that you have the right bed. I did not realize that you could scale these objects. I actually think that's pretty cool. And then T to translate and move around. They also have a preset here so I can just type in a room and then I could still, let's see if I could scale this if I wanted to. Yeah, it looks like I can still scale those items. One thing that I am noticing here is that, at least natively, or I don't know yet how you can know what you're selecting or do like a select all. Let's see, select all just selects everything. So again, there are some like little nuances there, but overall you can pretty quickly just generate a base scenario scene, which is kind of nice. Let's see if we what kind of objects that we could create. Let's just do like table, see what it can find. And there's the table. So again, I mean, let's say, let's compare this to Rhino or Revit. You know, in Revit, you would be clicking basically like a catalog of items and placing a family. In Rhino, you would be most likely modeling this from scratch. Here, you just type in the item and it appears but you're still selecting from a preset um, preset catalog here. So there are some similarities, at least in there, that you have these preset assets. So again, how much does the language model part of this give it its, its advantage? 
And that's where one of my favorite aspects is actually the this render aspect to this, which I think is really uh, interesting and cool. So I think I can add a scene. This is a scene tree render. So I guess I had to create a scene. So now I'm going to add variations. Well, actually, let's just generate a rendering and just see what happens. And then once we've done some of this rendering items, I am going to upload a picture of my room and then see what kind of objects that we can add. So this is taking a second to render. So I guess still my essential question is about when is it most advantageous and when does it really accelerate the process when you can use language to generate a design? I think that's really one of the, the questions that I have here. And so there's not in every single circumstance language is really the best and primary way to model something per se, at least at this stage. But as this gets more advanced, uh, we could start to see more customization after you've made that initial prompt, or maybe you're making multiple prompts and then, you know, like within a field, like almost like an intake form uh, where you're specifying certain things and then it could generate a more cohesive design based on those parameters that you've set. But you still need that customization capability uh, in order to really drive that process. So this language-based approach today is actually working pretty well in terms of the rendering capabilities. When you think of a design tool, it's going to take a long time to build up the design tool aspects. And we've seen that with projects like Modumate and others that it takes a long time to build a complete design software. And they're already really ahead of the curve here, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, but one of the things that I've found most delightful walking through this program is definitely its rendering capabilities and really just taking a simple scene and making a pretty awesome rendering out of it. Now, there's going to be other platforms that just do this. So that is also a question of once that the designing and cap those capabilities can come up to speed, then matching it with this image generation uh, features, that might be kind of like a sweet spot that we could see. All right, enough talking. Let's try to add a variation. Uh, make this in the style of retro 90s collage. Yeah, so and I'm curious what all of you think about this idea of using language to generate designs. So this is my messy studio desk at this point, and we're going to generate the scene and see what happens. And part of this will actually be masking out the desk and seeing uh, what happens from there. All right, so that's kind of interesting. I can still see those terrible curtains. Okay, the last thing that we're going to try to do is add an object to this scene. So I'll drag and drop a person, and then we can hit mask, and we can place this person in the room. All right, and there it generated the person into the scene there. So just a really quick way you could add furniture, you could add different items to the scene and then render those the way that you wanted to. So let me know what you think of this tool so far. And there is a waiting list that you can get added to to test out some of these features for yourself. But let me know what you think.